You messed up my intro. Do you a peace time travel? It is possible that you a peace in time travel. Here is some useful background information. Abbreviations. EOP equals experience of the present, the instant experience of the now. HUD equals human unit of time, duration of human EOP, useful for comparisons with different organisms. ST equals space time. Tips 1. Whenever you see mention of experience of present or human unit of time, try to visualize it as if looking at a wall in front of you that is 3 meters wide, 10 feet. Then later when we zoom in or out, it's easier to understand that your perception will contain less time, zoomed in, you see 1 meter of the wall, or more time, zoomed out, like 9 meters. And that zoomed in shows more granular details, while zoomed out shows more macroscopic details. 2. Whenever you see mention of information, of the universe, realize that this information has no shape, location, or temporal order. It is non-local. To visualize this, imagine a large collection of numbers. What is the distance between numbers 3 and 7? How fast is 8 moving? Is 12 in the future of 20? These are meaningless questions because this is non-local information. The information in this diagram however is not numbers based. It is more abstract. Space time, st. This will be an extremely simplified description of space time, st, just to make it easy to understand the rest. We are assuming that loop quantum gravity, LQG, is correct. The universe consists of non-local information. ST are connections in that information and consists of quantities of Planck lengths, so it is not a continuous field, which are the smallest possible lengths, aka the pixels of ST. Go any smaller than this, and the pixels, so ST itself, are in a non-separable state and lose their identity. If space-time consists of non-local information, then why does it appear as space-time? Who knows, maybe this is how our minds have evolved to make sense of the information. In summary, the universe consists of non-local information and space-time is, a sensory representation of, connections in that information. Perception of time. Imagine the universe consists of information and that there are minds that, through their senses and brains, experience part of this information and interact with it. Here we have a human. Human senses detect a fraction of the information and this appears as the present. So the present is actually the experience of the present, EOP, and is subjective, not an objective moment in time. The past is the information that human mind has interacted with. The future is information it hasn't interacted with. Our perception of time is the result of ignorance of the bigger set of information, just like a flat-looking Earth is the result of us not seeing the curvature. Our senses detect information and this is our experience of the present. Our past and future are relative to this EOP. Let's compare the human EOP with those of some other minds. A human senses detect a fraction of the information and has its own human EOP. This is one human unit of time, hut. b. Dragonflies have different senses and proce data faster. Their EOP is smaller than humans, meaning they experience the world in slow motion compared to us, about five times slower, so that's 0, 0,2 hut. To see a cool video about this, type BBC Dragonfly in YouTube. Even though its EOP is different, it still experiences this as an instant. C. Turtles, and other large animals with slow metabolic rates, experience time faster than us. Compared to them, 
we humans experience slow motion. If you've ever wondered what it's like to experience slow motion, wonder no more, you are living it right now. D. A hypothetical mind X can contract or expand its EOP similar to how we can focus our eyes on different distances. Even within individual humans the EOP is flexible in some situations, slow motion during life and death situations, timelessness during meditation, etc., so this is not a supernatural concept. E. The praying mantis may be an example of, D because of its unique motion-based 3D vision. F1 F2, imagine the universe as a whole looks like a wooden plank. If someone were to drop a heavy weight on one side of it, F1, the other side, F2, would instantly move up. To humans, this change appears spread out over time. We could study the motion of the individual atoms involved, etc. But this is just an analogy, the universe is not a plank, it's non-local information. Elizondo's Burning Cigarette You can also view the EOP as Elizondo's Burning Cigarette. Luis Elizondo What if there were things that had the ability to experience where the present was a much bigger transition, where more elements of the future and past are experienced as the present? What if there were species out there that experienced the universe with an extra level of dimension? Is it possible some of these UAP have the ability to? We experience them when they are right here right now, but every other time. Perception of causality Usually when we think of slow motion, we think that stuff just moves slower. This seems so for slight deviations faster or slower but what actually happens is that different causal effects become visible and interactive. Something that moves very fast appears as a stretched out motion blur to humans, while dragonflies may see a clear image of a bug moving along. Suppose that a bug is moving from A to B. To the human, it's not exactly clear where the bug is, though the general direction and destination are visible. To the dragonfly, it's exactly clear where the bug is, how it is moving, up, down, in little loops, etc., though its final destination is less clear. The dragonfly perceives more granular details of the causal relations involved, maybe the bug avoided a raindrop while moving from A to B, while the human perceives more macroscopic causal relations. Notice also that the bug appears thinner to the dragonfly. Now let's go extreme and see what happens. Experiencing slow or fast motion actually allows one to see different causal effects. Extreme slow motion. Extreme slow motion experience, as mind X enters this state, the object observed becomes so thin, that individual particles, the forces, and vast space between them become visible. Phenomena that previously appeared smooth and continuous become discrete packets and all sensations, sight, sound, feeling of touch, etc., will be affected, resulting in a high strangeness experience. Macroscopic causality, moving from A to B, becomes completely invisible because it takes millions of years. Ultimate slow motion experience, at this point, the object being observed becomes so thin that it exceeds the minimum possible length, the Planck length, PL. When this happens, the quantum nature of space-time is revealed and non-spatial, non-local, causality becomes visible. Extreme slow motion can make particles and the forces between them visible. Extreme fast motion Extreme fast motion experience Mind X increases the duration of its EOP. Normal moving objects, individual organisms, storms, etc., will stretch out, blur, become transparent, and then invisible. They exist in a particular location only for a relatively short amount of time, and the EOP no longer contains such details. Slower moving objects, which previously appeared entirely motionless, will start moving, and their causal effects become visible, the movement of mountains will look like ocean waves, 
radioactive effects with long half-lives like the splash of a water balloon. Ultimate Fast Motion Experience The EOP is so long that the entire time span of universe has been stretched into invisibility. Effects that caused the universe to form become visible simultaneous with the effects the universe had on them. Extreme fast motion can make macroscopic, long-lasting, processes visible. Timelines Each mind has its own timeline, because it interacts with part of the information, which itself has no temporal order, and experiences this as the present. That means that past, present and future are meaningless except in relation to a mind. When a mind interacts with some information, it makes an imprint, I am, on this information similar to how a body of mass makes a dent in space-time. You can also imagine it as a spider web. A, human 1 and human 2 both have human brains and senses, so have virtually identical EOPS. B, they meet up and do stuff. They interact with closely connected information. Their imprint has a weight of 2, I am asterisk 2. C, red glow, all imprints affect closely connected information. These effects ripple outwards and can be considered probabilities. A mind encountering these probabilities will experience them as physical constraints. Probabilities from two timelines influence each other, essentially making them time-synced. D, X symbols, dark spots where little or no imprint has been made. A mind there will experience few constraints, more degrees of freedom. The future is also such a dark spot. The further ahead, the more dark. E, they go their separate ways and do stuff, imprinting the information as individual minds, I am asterisk 1. F, they meet up again. Even though they went their own way and have separate timelines, their imprints and the rippling effects of them result in a consistent whole. Each mind interacts with, imprints, part of the information and has its own timeline. Objective reality is sum total of these imprints, the information interacted with by minds. There are dark spots where little or no imprint has been made. Objective reality so we have information and minds imprinting it on their own timelines. What about objective reality? A. Minds come in many different forms. Mind should not be seen as a special human phenomenon, but as a very basic form of sensing the environment. Since we evolved from a primordial microbe and all our behavior can be seen in less complex form in those, looking for food, responding and adapting to the environment, procreating, etc., perhaps even microbes have some form of mind. b. The combined timelines of all minds, the sum total of their imprinted information, are what we call objective reality. This is like a spider web of timelines, in which the gaps are filled with probabilities in the form of physical forces. c. This objective reality appears to have a single timeline, but that's an illusion. D. Remember that different perceptions of time result in different causal interactions. This means that in the case of extreme differences, they are almost like separate causal layers. Almost, because the ripples from one layer do weakly influence or constrain the other layers. Biological life on Earth evolved in a life and death struggle with each other, so perhaps have relatively similar EOPs and operate in the same causal layer. Objective reality is actually the sum total of individual timelines. Life on Earth evolved in a life and death struggle between such timelines and now operates in an almost separate causal layer. Timeline Possibilities In the previous segment we had two human timelines. Now let's slow look what happens when there are timelines of minds with very different EOPs. A. The almost separate causal layers see previous slide, of minds with extremely different EOPs are divided by dark spots where little imprint has been made. b. Events in one layer can have a different temporal order relative to another layer. This is because information itself has no temporal order, 
and each layer is only weakly influenced by the other. C. A mind can move to the dark spots of another layer, future or past, leaving behind the causality of the previous layer. D. A mind will have problems moving to the past of a heavily imprinted timeline. Maybe this is like walking into a brick wall of constraints. Or it's a ghost-like observe-only experience, in which case a traveler mind wanting to make little impact may prefer the heavily imprinted part. And maybe it is easier to move to the past of a timeline where only a single imprint has been made. The other mind may experience inconsistent memories or strange synchronicities, but there will be no major butterfly effects because the mind is constrained by all the other imprints of minds around him. E. Notice that the E top is in the future relative to E bottom. Because E top is in a different causal layer, only the macroscopic future is visible, and not the detailed microscopic future of E bottom. The timelines of minds with different E ops form almost separate causal layers. Events in one layer can have a different temporal order relative to another layer. Minds can go from one layer to another essentially traveling to the past or future. Time Travel Craft, UA Peace So far it's all been about minds and their perception of time. Let's see what happens to the body, and if a craft, UAP, can be of use. A. The human body and mind have evolved over billions of years to survive in its native causal layer. Suppose someone changes his perception of time. What problems could he run into? He will see his own body change in the same way as the world around it, scroll up to read about these effects. This change also becomes an identity change and forms of dissociation may occur. Maybe out of body experiences, contracted or expanded awareness, multiple identities, memory loss, feeling disconnected from the world, psychosis, etc. Difficulty understanding what's happening in the other causal layer. In the native causal layer the body is unable to function slash survive while the mind is occupied elsewhere. In the best case this is like sleeping or a coma, but it may also be spasms, eye popping, strokes, running off a cliff. Are mistakes possible? If he changes his EOP to span 200YRS will his body age and die in a fraction of a second? b. We want a craft that can navigate to other causal layers while protecting the operator from the effects, sort of like a submarine. c. To navigate, the craft needs to be made of a single material that remains operable in the different causal layers. The material prevents dramatic changes in structure or shape of the craft, and absorbs, or emits, these effects in the existing space and forces between particles. A mind that has experience in other layers will have had the opportunity to study the exact physics involved and use this knowledge to create the material. To shift the material on the fly, maybe a current or a field is used. D. To protect the operator, the same material and same field can be used, except now to stabilize the inside of the craft to match the native causal layer. Basically it does the exact opposite of, C. The inside of the craft may appear bigger or smaller than the outside. E. A native inhabitant that comes near such a craft may, because of the material or fields, experience slight changes in its perception of time and other high strangeness effects. It can be difficult for a mind to move to other causal layers. A craft can be made that allows movement to other layers while protecting the operator from negative effects. Native layer inhabitants that come near such craft may experience high strangeness effects. Real world example of a causal layer. In the slide timeline possibilities, B, we see that events in one layer can have a different temporal order relative to another layer. Is there an example of this in the real world? Maybe the delayed choice experiment. Disclaimer, this is an extreme simplification of the experiment, with many flaws and inaccuracies, only meant to illustrate the different temporal order of events. Go to YouTube to see the real experiment.
A. Basically a photon is shot at a splitter that causes it to travel both paths, top, bottom, in an entangled state. The act of measuring the photon at detector 1 or detector 2, D1, D2, somehow influences which path the photon takes. This is strange enough, but it's even true when the choice of which detector to use is made after the splitting event. So somehow the future influences the past. B. Imagine this from the photon's perspective, as if it were a mind with its own timeline. A force from a different causal layer is sending constraints slash probabilities, red glows, back in time, from the perspective of the forces layer. The photon encounters these in normal chronological order in the form of physical forces. There simply is no path to detector 2 anymore. Maybe this is what it looks like when events from another layer directly push through in another. Notice that the human is only interacting with the detector, choosing to use detector D1. This sets the probability of the photon arriving there at 1. Nature itself does the rest and aligns the conditions at the splitter with that choice so that it matches that future outcome. The quantum world may be an example of a causal layer. Events there can have a different temporal order, which is demonstrated by the delayed choice experiment, DC. Abduction Could the photon example, see previous slide, also happen to a human? You already know where this is going. Yes it looks crazy. The red glows aren't actual force fields, but they show that events are stacking up, perhaps far back in time, to cause the human to appear at a certain location and moment in time. Since we are talking about individual timelines, this stacking up may mostly originate in the mind of the human, in the form of decisions. The nearer to that moment, the less degrees of freedom the human will have. Abduction claimants report unusual feelings preceding the onset of an abduction experience. These feelings manifest as, a, a compulsive desire to be at a certain place at a certain time or as expectations that something familiar yet unknown, will soon occur. Abductees also report feeling severe, undirected anxiety at this point even though nothing unusual has actually occurred yet. B. This period of foreboding can last for up to several days before the abduction actually takes place or be completely absent. Eventually, the experiencer will undergo an apparent, c, shift into an altered state of consciousness. British abduction researchers have called this change in consciousness the ounce factor. External sounds cease to have any significance to the experiencer and fall out of perception. They report feeling introspective and unusually calm. This stage marks a transition from normal activity to a state of limited self-willed mobility. As consciousness shifts one or more lights are alleged to appear, occasionally accompanied by a strange mist. The source and nature of the lights differ by report, sometimes the light emanates from a source outside the house, presumably the abductor's UFO. Sometimes the lights are in the bedroom with the experiencer and transform into alien figures. As the alleged abduction proceeds, claimants say they will walk or be levitated into an alien craft, d, in the latter case often through solid objects such as walls, ceilings, or a closed window. Alternatively, they may experience rising through a tunnel or along a beam of light, with or without the abductors accompanying them, into the awaiting craft. Eventually the abductors will return the abductees to terra firma, usually to exactly the same location and circumstances they were in prior to being taken. Usually, explicit memories of the abduction experience will not be present, and the abductee will realize they've experienced missing time upon checking a timepiece. A. These would be the constraints, red glow, moving the human towards the abduction event. It's the equivalent of the photon at the splitter choosing the route to detector 1. The bad news is that if this is really like the delayed choice experiment, DCE, then there may be nothing the human can do to avoid it. The good news for everyone else is that, since the human can feel this compulsive state as something abnormal, 
it probably means that aside from abductions, we all have free will, to some degree, in our causal layer. From the perspective of the abductors in their layer, we humans are in a superposition state until they arrive here. B. The moment of onset could be the moment the abductors start preparing or traveling to the human layer. C. The shift may be when the human reaches the maximally constrained, no free will anymore, moment of interaction, the equivalent of the measurement in the DCE. The different perceptions, calm, mist, lights, no sound, tunnel, may be the distortions of going into fast motion or slow motion. For example the mist could be the air condensing because of the craft field changing it from an expanded into a more contracted state. The person may be entering the craft and the interior protective field. See slide time travel craft, D. When a person is brought on board, this minimizes the imprint of the event in the human causal layer, so that it will almost be a subjective event. D. See next slide, tunnel beam. Alien abductions may be done by beings from another causal layer that have access to our future. When they travel to an abductee's timeline, this funnels him towards the inevitable abduction event. Tunnel Beam So the craft has arrived at its destination, the timeline of a human mind, and now the occupants want to interact with the human. The human is in his house or car or whatever. What happens next? We know from the previous slide that the movement of the craft to the human layer influenced the probabilities of the human to be at that location, compelling him to be there. It's possible that this same tech is also used up close, perhaps through a beam or whatever. This tech basically influences events that are a fraction of a moment in the future. In the human layer, this means those events have a probability of one to occur. If there happens to be an obstacle in the way, like a wall or a car frame, nature will align the conditions to make it happen anyway. There is a known mechanism in nature that does something similar, quantum tunneling. In quantum tunneling, the probability of a particle to cross a barrier is not zero, so under certain conditions it actually does. When it crosses the barrier it may lose some energy in the form of photons. The abductors may be exploiting this effect, but nature does most of the work. Maybe this is also how they can walk through walls. Future events can force nature to allow movement through obstacles, like walls. Instant acceleration, transmedium travel, low observability. Imagine the UAP is a submarine, and humans are fish. A. The sub is in its own causal layer having an EOP that contains much more time than a fish EOP. This extra time includes part of the future of the fish layer. To the sub, the fish are in an undetermined, invisible superposition of probabilities. The sub imprints information and this ripples outwards, backwards in time on the fish layer. By the time the ripples reach the fish layer, the fish experience them as weak constraints, physical forces. B. The sub can also dive towards the fish layer. As it dives deeper, its EOP shrinks and its causal interactions become more similar to those at the fish layer. As it gets closer, the fish experience stronger constraints. When the sub reaches the fish timeline, a funnel of constraints has rippled backwards in time and their meeting is inevitable, probability 1. While the sub operates at the fish layer, it experiences all the constraints of that layer. C. The sub can also hover just above the fish layer. Here its EOP contains only slightly more time than the fish EOP, and so contains some of its future. Why would it do that? Let's see what the world looks like in this slightly future layer. It is a world with more freedom, with probabilities that have not been set to one by human, or other earth mind interactions. Remember that a human's future is a dark spot where no imprint has been made and there are only probability ripples. The further into the future, the more dark, the fewer constraints, physical forces. 
basically all physical forces are diluted in this state, gravity is weaker, solid objects, or liquids, are transparent and pass through like air, distances are shorter or movements faster, etc. Whatever the UAP does in this state, the result will ripple backwards in time and nature will align the conditions in the human layer to match that future outcome, see the delayed choice experiment in the slide real world example. Instant acceleration and transmedium travel? If nature can quantum tunnel things through barriers, who knows what it can do to make a UAP go from A to B, so long as the probability isn't zero. Because the UAP is only slightly in the future, it experiences diluted physical forces while still being able to observe and interact with the human layer, something that isn't possible in its origin layer. It sounds abstract but it's just a more extreme version of how we can capture a dragonfly by closing the door of the room it is in. We can do this thanks to our larger EOP and the macroscopic perspective that allows us to easily see the bigger causal relations, while the dragonfly is busy in its smaller, slow motion, EOP. For the UAP, the areas that are more constrained, more dense physical forces, are those that more earth minds, timelines, are about to interact within their layer. The UAP may be able to detect and avoid these areas as easily as we can avoid trees. This also means the UAP knows when it is being observed and so can achieve low observability. Basically what it is doing is navigating the web of timelines, the total of which we call objective reality. If it does get observed, it will often be limited to the timeline of a single human and actually be a subjective phenomenon. Even people nearby may not see the same thing, if they see it at all. UAPs can hover in a slightly future, for us, state where the forces of nature are diluted and they have control over our present, which is encompassed by their EOP.